evening and God bless you. I'm Evangelist Carolyn Vincent and I bring you greetings from Apostle Thomas Harrison Vincent and the beautiful High Point Christian Tabernacle family. Now tonight we're going to join one of our sons as he comes to us in his own way with our Bible study tonight. So we're going to feature Elder Eric Good. We want you to hit your share buttons, invite somebody to join us tonight. We know that God is going to use him in a great way. Now let's join Elder Good as he takes us into our Bible study. Without God, I could do nothing. Without Him, I would fail. Without God, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. One of those songs from yesteryears. We don't sing it too often anymore. Come on, help me sing it. Without God, I could do nothing. Without Him, I would fail. Without God, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Let's look to the Lord, Father, tonight as we come before your presence to give you glory, praise, and honor. We thank you for this opportunity to lift our hands again in your presence and declare there is no God like our God. Now, Lord, come and dwell in the midst of us. May the Spirit of God give us enlightenment, direction, revelation from the power of the Holy Spirit. Quicken our minds that we may receive those things which the Spirit wishes to desire to deposit into us. Now, Lord, wherever my voice is being heard and the lesson is being watched on the world wide web, I pray that the name of Jesus will be exalted everywhere. Receive the glory, receive the praise that so richly and exclusively belongs unto you. For you are a great and mighty God. And let every heart say in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We first give an honor to God, our pastors, Apostle Thomas and Pastor Carolyn Benson, to the High Point family. We thank God for you and to my lovely wife. And for those of you that may not be familiar with our ministry, we are located at 3269 Old Concord Road in the city of Marietta, I'm sorry, in the city of Smyrna, Georgia, amen, which is north of the city of Atlanta, Georgia, amen. We thank God for the opportunity to bring a message from his holy word. I thank my pastors for their trust and confidence and allow me to share in this precious hour. We don't take these opportunities lightly ministering before God's people. And as my sisters in the gospel would say, to hit those share buttons, those like buttons, so the word can be reached to the masses. And uh, if you want to go ahead and put a little running man down there in the comment section, praise God for you. We love you, we appreciate you, and we solicit your prayers on this evening. God is truly amazing and truly deserving our praise and worship tonight. He is more deserving of our obedience than any sacrifice offered up ever could do. I firmly believe that God is seeking after those who are seeking after him. All the while having the heart of David in his confession and saying that I will bless the Lord with all my soul and all that is within me. And if we can just give God maybe just a 10 to 15 second praise for a that's all within me type praise. I thank God because he is God and he is God alone. I ask that you just go ahead and just pour yourself out as a, your, out of your soul as a drink offering and allow God to fill us back up again. Hallelujah. Some of us have been going through on the job today. Some of us have been, had a bad week. Some of us just going through and just tired of going through. But I ask that you just lift up your hands today, this evening, and just give God a praise. 
the adoration, the worship that's due unto his name. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, allow your praise to exceed your expectation. He that begun a good work in you shall bring it to pass because what? God is on your side. It doesn't matter what chaos is going on around you because God is on your side. I don't care what they may say down at the bank. You're not going to be evicted because God is on your side. Hallelujah. I don't care what the MRI is saying down at the doctor's office. God is still the chief physician and he is on your side. Can we just give the Lord a hand praise? Hallelujah. <laughs> For who he is. Hallelujah. He is great and greatly to be praised. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank God. We thank God for everyone tonight. Tonight is Bible class. Amen. This is an opportunity, hallelujah, for God just to speak and to give us words of wisdom and understanding and enlightenment. And that's what we're praying for this evening. Amen. I believe there is no higher vocation than that of being a saint of God. This is my submission to each of us tonight that the work of a saint is the continuation of the work of Jesus Christ. Who said in John the ninth chapter verse 5. As long as I'm in the world. I am the light of the world. The history of the church finds its origin founded on four little letters. L-O-V-E. Love. The universal language. Love. For the Bible teaches us that God is love. And he that abides in love abides in God and God in him. The Bible also helps us to recognize that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In other words, you can't just come to God any old type of way. And if you don't believe me, if you were to go and find that man over in Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verse 12, the Bible talks about a wedding feast set by the king. And when the king saw that this man came improperly dressed. He said, wait, 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 what, what, what is that you got on? What, what are you trying to do? He said, friend, how do you get in here without the wedding garments or the proper attire? The Bible said that the man was speechless. And because of his incorrect response, the king binded his hand and feet and cast him into outer darkness. Yes, I hear some of us tonight. Just for not having on the right garment, can disqualify me? And the answer is yes. I would imagine if you were to track down the NBA Hall of Famer, Dominic Williams, he would share with you that he knew this feeling all too well. Understand that the man in the 22nd chapter of Matthew, it wasn't that he didn't have ample enough time to dress into the correct garment, Understand those that were gathered from the highways were always, oftentimes, inappropriately clothed. So time is given to them to clothe themselves in proper attire that was proved by the king. But here's the key. This man, he chose not to. He chose not to. He purposed within his heart to go into a sacred place and around holy things without the proper attire. Still talking about love. It's that love of God for the love of man. I call it that tough love. That type of love that gives us access to sup with Christ. So we can be called the sons of God. For it was God that said, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Let the church say amen. Amen. If I had a subject tonight, it would be entitled, When Was the Last Time You Checked the Time? And a subtopic would be, Are We There Yet? When was the last time you checked the time? And are we there yet? There are two key points that I would like to discuss this evening while sounding the same alarm that Apostle Vincent, Vincent so impactfully preached just a few weeks ago on May 16th. 
May 16, 2021, was one of the church's outdoor worship experiences. Those that were part of that worship service understood that Noah only had 120 years not only to preach, pray, and prophesy, but he had to build the ark, find all the components in the building of this vessel, plant and harvest food. He had to tend to himself and his family in the saving of his household. Now, in being transparent on this evening, I had another message that I thought was the word for the hour. But the Lord said, son, I want you to stay right there. The Holy Spirit impressed upon me as it relates to the time that we are living. One is the season of time. And the other is the coming of the time. Season of the time refers to a general time frame. Whereas coming of the time is a fixed or special occasion. For it was the disciples that asked Jesus the question in Acts the first chapter verse 6. When will thou restore again the kingdom of Israel? They were looking for a physical sign which had a date or limitations attached to it. Jesus said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. The point Jesus was trying to bring out was he wanted his church, his bride, his people called by his name to be ready and on alert and not to be carried away of the cares of this life. And that that day come on you unexpectedly. The day of the Lord's return. Apostle Paul, Paul gives us the characteristics of the season that we are living. I ask that you turn with me to the second chapter of Timothy. Second chapter of Timothy. Timothy, second chapter, chapter 3. Verses 1 and 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. That in the last days perilous times shall come. Paul's message to Timothy was that there were, will be a day and time when. Verse 2. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. This is a fact. We see that now more so than ever before. Men are starting to outspend women on cosmetic makeovers, clothes, fashions. As the industry would say, is that men are building their name brand. A few years ago, there was an online poll that, uh, that polled men that were around 18 and on up. And these were men that would not necessarily call themselves fashionados. In this survey, they found this poll that Men outspend women $85 a month to women $75 per month. And they say this was largely cont contributed because of men's athletic wear and the market share versus women's sport apparel. However, P Apostle Paul was very clear in saying that men will be covetous, boisterous, in other words, conceited, self-centered, absorbed in oneself. <laughs> we all know somebody like that. Proud, blasphemers, lack of reverence or disrespect, contempt, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. That word incontinent means lacking self-restraint or control. Fears, also meaning aggressive, despisers of those that are good, traitors, someone who betrays friendships, heady, strong-willed, ungovernable people, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. 
the key takeaway in Paul's message was that he was sharing this message with the believers. In other words, instead of the accusations being pointed at the world, they were intended for the church. We will be in perilous times. And the church of the living God will be in the status of being covetous, boisterous, proud, blasphemers. The people of God will be disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Yes, the people of God. These characteristics highlight and draw immediate attention to the era we are in right now. The All About Me movement. The Q movement. Lives Matter movement. LGBTQ WXYZ movement. There's more movements out there than there are people going to church. I believe if more people were acting actively involved in 2 Chronicles 7 chapter verse 14 movement, if my people humble themselves, pray, seek my face and turn, therefore if we to deal with the immediate, that which is imminent right before us, that is which is ready to take place, that which is hanging over us. We as Christians and believers would take great pleasure in taking personal stock and inventory of what Apostle Paul was trying to declare to us, the church. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. If you turn with me there. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 14. Hallelujah. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him? That's the key. Death is not the end of the story. Verse 15, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now that which is imminent to us, that which is about to happen, we call this rapture that what we call the great catching away. For the Bible says in verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive, prayerfully that's you and I, in 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter, the Bible declares in a moment, in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. My beloved family, hear me tonight. We are in rapture season. Because we're in rapture season, God in his grace and his divine mercy has extended to us, the church of the living God, another opportunity to get it right before he comes. Yes, yes, I hear. I hear in the spirit realm this evening that some of us believe that I'm doing all that's asked of me. I mind my own business. I don't bother nobody. I haven't committed any false witness, I don't steal, I pay my tithes, I honor my mother and my father. I'm here to tell you and remind you this is nothing new. The rich young ruler said the same thing in Matthew the 19th chapter. He said, all these things I have kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? I'm here to admonish us of the importance of being diligent and keeping our heart and motives pure. The Bible lets us know in Psalms, the 66th chapter, verse 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Bible declares that God is angry with the sinner, the wicked, every day. If we're to stop and consider the church of Ephesus, 
The church of Ephesus highlights the things that God favors and the things that we are lacking. The things that God favors and the things that we are lacking. Revelation, the second chapter. Turn with me there. Revelation, the second chapter, verse 2. Revelations 2 and 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars verse 3 and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy what? First love. Verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee slowly, no, quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of thy place, out of its place, except thou repent. Jesus is giving us, each of us, ample opportunity to not miss out on the manifestation and the move of God. Jesus is very specific to this church. He's the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. The lampstands are the churches themselves, set as lights in a dark world. The stars are the pastors of the church held in God's hands. Let me, let me take a pause right here. That's why it's important to hold up the man and woman of God that have rule over you. They are praying and watching over our souls every day. That's why so much emphasis is placed on Aaron and her and their ability on being sensitive in the spirit. In Exodus the 17th chapter verse 12, the Bible says Moses' hands were heavy. How many know pastors get tired, burdened, sometimes have feelings of, of apprehension with like passions? We always try to make them be, to be somewhat of a superhero, more than human. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors. They're not more than human. They're more than conquerors. The Bible says that Aaron and Hur took a stone and put it up under him, and he sat therein, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands the one on the one side and the other on the other side and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun one of the most recognizable and commendable things that Jesus did was to affirm to validate to state positively the Ephesians pure actions I know your deeds your hard work and your perseverance. I know thou that you cannot tolerate wicked men, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not. My Bible says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit of whether they are from God. Tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. Jesus also pours out the accolades to the church in Ephesus by further saying that you have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Here's a little sidebar question. How many can say that they are guilty of being an apologist or a Christian apologist? For those of you that may not recognize that term, a Christian apologist is someone who defends the apostolic doctrine through systematic argumentation and disclosure. All that being said, in other words, when someone comes up to you and says, I don't know if there is a God, and I don't know why you believe in someone that can allow so much hurt and harm to go on in the world. Once you open your mouth to defend your belief, then you are a Christian apologist. 
Jesus said that I see your good works in defending my dignity and my divinity. We have to understand that the Ephesians church was a hard-working group of believers, full of fortitude, much like many of us. Another attribute to their credit was that they were gatekeepers of the truth and did not compromise with evildoers. And they showed patience, endurance, and bearing up under hardship. However, let the church say, however, Jesus also notes their shortcomings. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Although they were hardworking, but they no longer had the same passion for Christ as when they first believed. Their work was no longer motivated by love. I be, believe God has extended us another opportunity to get it right before he comes. He has extended to us out of his external grace and out of his infinite mercy another opportunity to make sure that we are in complete alignment with God. Because the church is that which the success of the world hinges upon, remember, the Bible tells us that judgment must begin where? At the house of God. God is giving us another opportunity. He's giving us a God-made opportunity to get our affairs in order, to, to be on a posture to fly. And I'm not talking about flying the friendly skies. I'm talking about far greater beyond the atmosphere and the stratosphere and the ionosphere. I'm talking about a place where moss and rust don't have an effect. A place where thieves don't break in and steal. Tell your neighbor, <laughs> as God gives me the grace, I'll run this race. Until I see my Savior face to face. How do I Tell your neighbor, I have made up my mind. I am going up yonder to be with the Lord. Hallelujah unto God. Yana Messiah, I am going up yonder. Jesus called the Ephesians to repent. Jesus called to their attention to remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. In this case, the corrective action was to remember the heights of their former love. Repent. In other words, change their mindset about the current status and return to their previous way of doing things. So my friends, God is giving us an opportunity to make a U-turn this evening. God is calling for us to repent which is one of our principles of the doctrine of Christ found in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, repenting from dead works. God is wanting us for himself unto eternity. He has set the foundations for us to meet his face in peace. So, as we earlier stated, the first key point is the season of time. It refers to a general time frame. The second key point that I would like to bring to our focus is the coming of the time. That we as saints of the true and living God have to be very attentive in this time that we are living. We have to be attentive to what Paul had warned the church about in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse starting at verse number three. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, starting at verse number three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables, in other words, myths or untruths, Verse 5, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, 
Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. We have seen during this time of this pandemic interruption that some pastors and preachers have now eliminated or eliminating entire components of the doctrine of Jesus Christ simply because Jesus and the apostles' teachings are things modern Christians do not want to hear about, which is unfortunate. It is popular now that teaching and preaching is centered around self-help and self-improvement. But there's little or no preaching about self-sacrifice and self-denial. Jesus said, if any man be my disciple, he must do three, three things. He must first take up his cross. He must then deny himself. And after successfully doing those two things, he must follow me daily. Modern preaching deals largely with the things God will give me, but very little preaching now deals with what God requires of me. The late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was quoted saying, we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. Dr. King went a little further to say, an individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. What to God that saints will have a Galatians 2 and 20 testimony and saying, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet Christ that liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. What would that look like if we asked God, what can I do for my God, instead of what can God do for me? What can I do for the kingdom of God? Instead of what can the kingdom of God do for me? What can I do for the church of God? For the people of God? What can I do to get the gospel to those that do not know the saving power of Jesus Christ? A great deal of focus is acquiring the blessings of the Lord. And understand, there's, there's nothing with being blessed. God wants us to be blessed and to be a blessing. But very little preaching is done now concerning the consequences of sin. I must announce to those in the sound of my voice that there are still consequences for disobeying God. The scripture says that the wages of sin is still death. The Bible declares that my sin separates me from my God. There is too much emphasis on the receiving of material things. Turn around eight times and you'll have a car in one day. Jump on your left foot and receive diamonds, rubies, and pearls. The emphasis on receiving material things without the proper equal emphasis on the pursuit of spiritual things is unbalanced. And it's an unbiblical approach to Christianity. Paul was right in his approach in saying that after their own lust, Keep unto themselves teachers having itching ears. The people of God during the days of the prophet Jeremiah said, prophesy unto us smooth things. You know, I thank God for me having pastors after his own heart. I recall, and I'm sure you do too, there was a time when the saints of God had only one church, one pastor, one visionary. Now I'm coming to find out that people have several pastors. They got their home church pastor, conference pastor, YouTube pastor, podcast, television, Instagram pastor. But that's confusion. That's why we're having trouble paying our tithes. Well, my podcast pastor said that that's the Old Testament way. We don't have to do that now. The devil is a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. My Bible says bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. My Bible says that Abraham gave a tenth of all his increases to Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God. Don't let nobody fool you in telling you that it doesn't take tithes to build God's kingdom. 
That's why we can't eat at everyone's table and stay spiritually healthy. When God has placed a pastor over individuals' lives to watch for their souls, it's that difficult thing that pastors after God's own heart must say that our flesh don't want to hear. Then when our flesh goes and acted up being called out on the carpet, we have the audacity to just pick up and go across town to another church with all our problems, our issues, and our concerns without any discretion about changing churches than changing clothes, shoes, and our shirts. How many know that we need more than hearing messages that are going to make us feel better? We need messages that's going to make us do better. The Bible says don't be just a hearer of the word, but be a doer also. In our quest, in this continuance, in the faith of Jesus Christ, Apostle Paul said in Acts the 14th chapter to his young church that, that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Psalms 34 and 19 says it like this. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Let me stop here long enough to pause and say, to those of you that are on this virtual platform tonight, that are experiencing agonizing physical pain in your bodies, those of you that the enemy has lied and told and told you that the cycle of pain, limitations, and frustrations that you have been living in will never end. The word of the Lord is that on or before the end of this week, for some, will be the beginning of the end. It shall be the beginning of of the end of long cycles of pain, long cycles of sickness, long cycles of frustrations and limitations and bondage. The Lord God, who cannot lie, said that this is the beginning of the end. I come tonight with all the wind and the veracity of God and his word not many days hence, God is going to put a period where the devil put a comma. Now, maybe God has some of you on the other side of your comma, but there are some of us that have been through long time wondering when God was going to show up to say enough is enough. I realize that this is Bible class, but the Lord is looking for somebody to go into the middle of next week and intercede on the behalf of someone else and give God some glory as if it's already here. That's it. Worship God forever. Can you see God moving mountains for somebody? Making the crooked places straight. I'm glad you held on. I'm glad you didn't give up. I'm glad you didn't go throw in a towel. I see these long cycles is over. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ooh, you can just lift your hands up, Sister Willis, Deacon Willis. Lift your hands up right now. Long cycles. The Matthew family. I'm going to see you in the spirit realm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Psalms 30 and 5. Psalms 30 and 5. Psalms 30 and 5. For his anger endureth but a moment in his favor is life. How many thank God for his favor tonight? Give God for I thank you for your favor praise right now. Ooh, shout out, mama. I thank you, Lord, for your favor. Oh, your unmerited favor. Although I didn't deserve it, but you gave it to me anyway. Oh, 
Although, I didn't worship you at all times, but you gave me your favor, God. Thank you. Thank you for your favor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your favor. Yes, Lord. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. When God gets into the dimensions of time, what takes people months, weeks, and years, God can do in a minute. One day with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. If we can just step out of the familiar into the unfamiliar, step out and away from the boat, and allow God to do for you in one day what it will take others the rest of the year to get. Let me just give God a praise. Hallelujah. Just to step out into the unfamiliar. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yes, that word endure. That word endure is a Hebrew word. Loon. A Hebrew word endure means loon. That word loon emphasizes the longevity of a painful situation. The word endure means to linger, to, to tarry. It means to, to lodge. That word endure means to hold on. A lot of times when the adversary gets a hold of somebody's mind, he doesn't want to turn it loose. When he gets a hold of your children, he doesn't want to let them go. When the spirit of struggle and poverty comes into your finances, he doesn't want to lose your money. When he gets into your body with an ailment or a sickness, he will try to make it linger. Can we just give the Lord a hand praise? Hallelujah! Thank you! What am I my see on the Boko Shire? Glory, 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 glory. But let me hear this to say tonight, God is still on the throne. There is a negative cycle-breaking anointing that is hovering in the atmosphere tonight. And, and the only thing it needs to be activated is a high praise. <laughs> is a high praise. Open your mouth and push out a shout. God says this is a, a negative cycle breaking anointing. And we need some more intercessors. Somebody to get into their prayer closet. Somebody to go. The kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. Take your kids back. Take your anointing back. Take the word back. How did I'm gonna say stand flat footed on the word? Hallelujah. Those who have been holding on, waiting on God, holding on to your faith, wondering how long this test, how long this struggle, how long will I have to live with this pain every day? How long will I have to take this medication, uh, making sure I don't intermix one with the other? Uh, how long will I have to deal with this frustration? Uh, how long will I have to deal with this breach in my family? Uh, how long would it be before my children come back to the Lord? Uh, how long would it be? Uh, how long will I be in this squeeze? Uh, well, the word of the Lord tonight... Uh, is that many of you are approaching the beginning of the end with great speed and efficiency. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord said that you will notice the shift in the atmosphere. You will see altars that shouldn't have been erected in your life come crashing down. <laughs> Valleys and hills being exalted. Walls that have been causing downward mobility suddenly being reversed. <laughs> Not too many days hence, you will see the last becoming the first and the first now shifting positions becoming the last. <laughs> yes, Shamamu, I feel you, Lord. I hear you. Where you were last to understand in school, you're now 
the first to get it. You were the last to believe and now the first to receive by faith. Ladable Kosaya, last to get your breakthrough. Now your breakthrough is now on the other side of through. Lift your hands to God. Ooh, and just give him worship tonight. An unscripted, an unorthodox, a gregarious praise, a high praise, a hallelujah praise. Lord, I believe you praise. Lord, I need your praise. Lord, I receive your praise. Lord, I love your praise. Lord, I lift you up praise. Can we just get into the spirit realm? Step into the spirit zone. I know I'm going to let the Lord fill you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I hear you, Lord. And I'm going to Understand. Understand that when the Lord shut up the door to Noah's ark, judgment was pronounced in the land. When judgment hits the land, it's coming with fierce and sudden swiftness. So, family, we need to open our eyes of understanding and see that God is making a definite distinction between saints and sinners, between us and them, between the coaches and the players, between the front office staff, hallelujah, and the players for my athletic followers. God is going to make a distinction between the saints and the sinners, uh, while those who are living outside the shadow, uh, those individuals who are not covered by the blood, hear me, uh, the Lord said they shall be utterly destroyed, uh, but the saints, <laughs> the saints of the Most High will be miraculously protected. Uh, you ought to tell the Lord, thank you for your protection. <laughs> Everyone ought to just raise your hand up and tell the Lord, thank you for this mystical covering over my baby, over your workplace, on your street, down your subdivision, over the shopping centers, Amtrak and the Megabus, the airport and the bus stations, over I-75, 85, 285, I-2400. <laughs> Aren't you glad that airplanes didn't just fall out of the sky on your way to work? Walmart or the family vacation? Downtown Atlanta. Ooh, thank you for your covering. Where all these diabolical mass shootings and demonic terroristic attacks waiting on somebody to give the green light. Aren't you glad that the most higher God stepped into the situation? Ooh, the Spirit of the Lord, I reverse it in this hour, and we declare and decree that it should not come nigh thy dwelling. Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. Let us look at uh, Job the 34th chapter. Job the 34th chapter. Starting at verse 20, huh? the core of the Lord is going to lift up a standard for his people. Huh? Look over at the person sitting on the couch next to you huh? and tell them this is a good time to be saved. Huh? Look at the person on the other side of you huh? and tell them this is a bad time not to be saved. Huh? This is a good time to be saved huh? and this is a bad time not to be saved. Huh? Let us look at Job the 34th chapter, verse 20. Uh, yes, Lord. In a moment uh, shall they die, uh, and the people shall be troubled when at midnight, uh, and pass away, uh, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand, uh, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. Uh, Meaning there should be no force, no power, no defense that shall be able to stop the judgment of God. Doesn't that sound familiar from Apostle Vincent's teaching of giants in the earth? In those days, not, all, not tall men, but giants of ingenuity, science and learning and education. You'll find that reference in Genesis, the sixth chapter, verses three and four. Woo, drop down to uh, verse 21, Job 34, verse 21. God is going to walk 
the earth at midnight. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness, nor shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. In other words, there's no hiding place. There's no storage. There's, there's no bunker. There is no place for the workers of iniquity to hide themselves. It is important not to look at storms. Ah, Rabo Kosaya. Haya Rabo Kosaya. Remember, it's not good to look at storms, other people's storms, and, and do a, a, a comparative analysis. Uh, it's equally important not to compare ourselves with the wicked and wonder why they never seem like they ever going through anything, always appearing to be prosperous. The Bible says that there's no hiding place. The only place you can hide is under the hands of the Almighty. Psalms 91 and 1, one of my favorite passages of scripture. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then I must say, drop down to verse 24, Job 34, 24. God is telling us what he shall do. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their stead. I think we can see that God ain't playing. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others others in their stead. This is about to be a complete upheaval in the balance of power and the Lord holds the balance in his hands. <laughs> what God is saying and wanting us to grab a hold of by faith is that the last is about to be the first. The poor is about to become the rich. The cursed are about to become the blessed. Come on now. <laughs> The borrower is about to become the lender. The forgotten are about to become the unforgettable. The weak are about to become the strong. The sick are about to become the healed. The minority are about to become the majority. And the unemployed are about to become the entrepreneurs. And the stepped on are about to be stepped up. <laughs> Can we give God some praise? Can we just give him the adoration for turning this thing right side up? Give some God some praise. The high victorious praise. Yes, Lord. <laughs> this is our destiny. This is our breakthrough. This is our comeback. Victorious victories. I hear it in the atmosphere. Bless God forever. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you. If we could just see the plot and the plan what the devil had planned over these past 14 months. But God blocked it. And because he blocked it, he's about to turn your life right side up. The momentum has shifted in your favor. You don't have time to tell the whole story. Just tell them it didn't work. Every scheme, every plot, every plan, every conspiracy, every lie did not work. No weapons formed against you has the ability to prosper. If it had prosper, prospered, you'd be in the grave. If it had prospered, you'd be in an insane asylum. If it had a prospered, you would have lost your minds. Sitting somewhere in a corner, count leaves and ain't no trees. Tell your neighbor it did not prosper. <laughs> Woo, yeah, nah, my, my, my. See, uh, just give God a 10 seconds. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise. What the devil meant for evil, God turned it around for my good. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Yeah, that my mind's just right in your home. Just shout right side up. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. I believe that if we all get on one accord, that where eyes couldn't see and ears couldn't hear before, I believe that God can do heart impartation uh, and cataract surgery on our eyes for us to know who we are 
and who we are to him. Uh, I just believe that. Uh, God is about to overturn some things before he returns for his bride. <laughs> Tell your neighbor you're going to live to see it happen. <laughs> I hear that song, you're going to live to see it happen. So I release, live, 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 live. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> live, 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 live. Mm, Job the 34th chapter, verse 25. Therefore he knoweth their works, mm, and he overturneth them in the night so that they are destroyed. God knows the opposition you've been facing on that job. God knows your hidden enemies. God knows the conspirators that have come together that have tried to limit the limitless. Job 34 and 25, the Bible declares that your enemies will be overturned in the night so that they are destroyed. They shall be the plight of all those who are on the outside of the ark of safety. Those who are on the outside, the secret place of the Most High God. But here's the end of the matter for the outcome of the saints. Woo, glory. Psalms 91 and 9. Psalms 91 and 9. God said that he has his eyes on us. He said... He has heard your cry and seen your tears. This is what God is going to do for us. Because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. We need to pause right here to do something. <laughs> something right here. The Bible says no evil. No evil. No plague. Verse 11 is the reason why the devil can't just run roughshod all up and down your house and in and out of your family because verse 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy way. And the reason why this is possible is found in verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I believe verse 15 will give someone an unscripted, no hall bars prayed. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Have you ever prayed and wondered where God is? And here's where he's going to do his best work. How can we not give him praise when he said he's going to give us honor? Give him your best praise because your best worship, hallelujah, God said he's going to give you the honor. God is in the boomerang business tonight. He's going to take your praise and turn around and bless you with it and then honor you. God's going to take your praise, turn it around and bless you and then honor you. Verse 16, you shall not die but live. If God has to recreate every organ in your body, you will live. With long life will I satisfy him. So live, 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 live. Live to be out of Okosai. Live to be a walking, talking miracle. With long life will I satisfy him. Live. You don't have time to die, but live. Tell your neighbor, this is the time and this is the season. It's your time to prosper. It's your time to live. It's your time to be blessed. It's your time to be the head. It's your time to be the conqueror. It's your time to be the lender. It's your time to preach. Your time to prophesy. Your time to pastor. Your time to raise the dead. I curse the spirit of infirmity tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go 
back to the doctor by the end of this week and tell them to check you again. Check me again, Doc. Hallelujah. God is in the miracle working business. God is going to shake the foundations of every illegal place of confinement in your life. Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas was arrested illegally. They had broken no laws. They just interrupted the devil's agenda. Some of you are wondering why all this madness and craziness in my life? Because you have disrupted the devil's agenda. Since he can't take you out, the next thing he's going to try to lock you up. Acts 16 and 25 and I'm closing. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They didn't only pray. They sang songs. They sang praise songs, spiritual songs. Tell the nearest person next to you, get to singing. <laughs> Prayer and praise are like two hands and ten fingers. Prayer and praise are like two hands and ten fingers. It takes both to handle the presence of God properly. The Bible said that when they prayed and sang praises, the prisoners heard them. Tell your neighbor the next time that you're, who shut up, my mama, see ya. The next time you may not recognize, but your next praise is going to be more for you. More for me than it is for you. In other words, give God a praise right now. It's not only going to affect you, it's going to affect me. Your praise is predicated on your blessings. Hallelujah. Ooh, God is turning some things around. I see it in the spirit, man. I see God doing the miraculous. I see him doing the powerful. God, we thank you tonight. We bless you. We honor you. We give your name the great praise and the glory and the adoration to your name. God, we thank you for turning things upside down, right side up, turning things in the spirit, man. We thank you. We glorify your name and we bless you. Hallelujah. 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 God is doing it, saints. <laughs> Bless God forever. <laughs> Glory to God. God is great <laughs> and greatly to be praised. We give God the praise and the honor and glory tonight. Uh, we pray uh, sweet success. Uh, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest rule and abide now, henceforth, forevermore. And it is in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let the church say in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We certainly hope that you were blessed tonight. We certainly enjoyed our son, Elder Eric Good. Amen. God is using him in a great way. He's very faithful. So we trust that you were blessed on tonight. Now, we want to turn our attention toward giving. Amen. We want you to direct your attention to highpointlive.org. Go on the church website. That's highpointlive.org and sow your tithe and offering. Those of you that are giving by way of mail, send those to High Point Christian Tabernacle P.O. Box 813-699, Smyrna, Georgia 30081. That's High Point Christian Tabernacle P.O. Box 813-699, Smyrna, Georgia 30081. And may the Lord continue to bless you real good. Amen. Now, Sunday, we are going to be featuring Evangelist Joyce Rogers. As you know, she was a dear friend of High Point, and the Lord recently took her home to be with him. Amen. But throughout this holiday weekend, we want to just uh, feature her in a sermon on this Sunday. So we want you all to tune in. Amen. And just remember how the Lord used her. She was a friend of High Point. Amen. And we were all tremendously blessed. Amen. By Evangelist Joyce Rogers. So tune in Sunday for that special broadcast. Also, ladies, all High Point women, don't forget that this Saturday is Face Down Prayer. We're going to be face down in prayer in our homes, wherever you are, from the hours of 10 to 11. Please observe the face down prayer. We have so much to pray for. Every first Saturday, set that time aside from the hours of 10 to 11. Amen. So again, ladies, don't forget, Saturday, July 3rd, 
is face down prayer. Amen, amen. Now, we also want to let you know that in observance of the 4th of July holiday, again, we're going to be virtu uh, worshiping virtually with Evangelist Joyce Rogers on Sunday, but then the church will be closed for our summer break. We will be closed all weekend. Amen. So the next live service will be right there at High Point Christian Tabernacle on Sunday, July 11th. Now, don't forget to go online and register to attend that service. You must register and you must wear your mask throughout the service. Now, God bless you and have a wonderful, safe holiday weekend. We love you.